Hello, today we will add animations to our 3D elements. Open and close the doors, the shelves and slide the sliding door. Let's create a new tab and call it Move Rotate. To add a possibility to open and close the doors, we will need two puzzles, which will work in tandem. The first puzzle is when dragged over. This puzzle identifies the click, tap and dragging motion over the certain object. And the second puzzle, here we get to choose, there are three of them, drag move, drag rotate and drag scale. So we can choose one depending on what we need to do with an object, to move it, scale it or rotate it. In this case, we will be rotating our object. So let's grab drag rotate and place it inside when dragged over. Now let's select an object which will be pressing and dragging over. In this case, the logic will work like this. We will be pressing and dragging over the door, so the door will open or close. So let's also select left door in the inputs of drag rotate puzzle. And we will be rotating by Z axis. And it's working already, the door is rotating. But it rotates too much, it clips through the cabinet. To set the limitation on how much we can rotate this object, we will need the puzzle Set Constraint. This puzzle helps us to create some limits to the object's transformations. First, let's name this constraint. It will be called Door Left Limit. We will not add any more constraints to this door, so we can call it simply. Now, let's select the object Door Left here and also set the type of constraint and axis. It will be Z axis. The maximum rotation limit will be 0 and minimum minus 100. It is so because the door opens counterclockwise, so the rotation is negative. If I open the door like this, its rotation will be minus 100 degrees. Alright, let's press play and try opening the door. Here we go, the door doesn't clip through the cabinet anymore. Next, let's do the same for the right door. Let's copy the setup, select right door instead of the left door, and change the name to door right limit. We need it so the constraint doesn't overwrite itself. Because if the constraint will be called the same, it will be overwritten, and the first will just disappear. Now here we will set the minimum value to 0 and maximum to 100. Here we have clockwise rotation, so the rotation will be positive. Ok, let's press play and try it, and here we go, the right door opens correctly as well. Now let's add the possibility to slide the sliding panel. Let's grab the same puzzles, when dragged over, and instead of drag rotate, we will use drag move, which lets us move certain object when dragged over. As a target object for dragging, let's select sliding door, as well as animated object will also be sliding door, by X axis. Let's press play and track the door, ok, it is moving, but again, we need some constraints. The door goes through the cabinet, so let's add a new constraint, and name it sliding door limit. The object for the constraint will be sliding door and here position by X axis. To get the right numbers for minimum and maximum, we need to go to Blender. So the minimum position or position on the left will be the current or default position of the sliding door. So let's copy it and paste here. 
As for the maximum position on the right, it will be actually the same, but inverted. So let's just delete the minus. Let's press play and see how it works. And it works perfectly. Alright, let's save and our next target will be the shells. Let's also get the puzzle when dragged over, drag move and select drawer 1, the bottom drawer, for both the trigger object and the target object. We will be moving them by Y axis. Let's press play and check. Again, we can drag it perfectly, but we need some constraints. Because we can drag it fully out, or even we can drag it through the wall into the void. Let's add another constraint. Name it drawer1 limit. Select the first drawer and Y position. Now back to Blender to get its default position. And here our current position will actually be maximum, because this position is further by Y axis. So we need to copy it to the maximum. As for the minimum, we can actually choose whatever we want, or how much we want the drawer to be tracked out. Let's say something like this. So we move it by minus 0.5 meters. So here I will also type minus 0.5. Let's save, press play and check. And here we go, the bottom drawer works perfectly. Next, let's do the same, but for the upper drawer. Let's select drawer 2 here also and as for the constraint we can just copy it fully as both drawers need to move the same by y axis again let's check how it works and nice the drawers are done and even if we change the measurements everything still works well The only thing that is kind of noticeable is that we need a little bit more advancement of the drawers when we have set depth to maximum. For that, let's go back to the size tab and here where the shape keys are being set, let's also add some changing of the limits. Let's press the options button on the animate param from puzzle and here let's enable when finished check mark. So we will be able to change the limits after changing the measurements via shape keys or morphs. So after the animation of changing the measurements is finished, we will be changing the limits. Now let's get the constraints for drawers that we have set and plug them here. Then in the beginning of the on event of puzzle, Let's set the remove constraint puzzle. So in the beginning, before any change, we will be removing the constraint. And then, if we change the depth, the constraint will be applied again. Actually, this puzzle redefines the constraint's parameters if its name is typed in the correct way. But in this case, the constraint stays in the way of the animation. So in the beginning, we will delete it before the animation is played, and after the animation it will be applied again. Also we will need map range puzzle, which we will place into minimum of both limits. Maximum limits will not be changed, because well we have a wall here, we don't need to go any further. But this one, minimum, we definitely need to change both to mean inputs for both constraints will be set to 
and zoom my X, we will set to minus 0.8. So when the depth of the cabinet is set to maximum, we will give the drawers a little bit more of moving space. Alright, let's save and see how it works in the application. Let's select drawers, drag them and they work just fine. Now let's set depth to maximum and the drawer travels further. And again, with minimum depth, everything works perfect. Alright, that's how constraints work. That's all, see you in the next tutorial.